How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. This is a new topic. This is topic three and in this one we're looking at how the periodic table is arranged. Let's go. Okay, topic 3.1, how is the periodic table arranged? We look at the S, P, F and D blocks and then we talk about location and electron configuration. The IB understandings and applications focus around having an understanding of the periodic table and then talking about the number of energy levels and the number of outer shell electrons. We also need to know the location of the metals, non-metals and metalloids. So the blocks of the periodic table. The periodic table can be arranged into four blocks associated with the four sub-energy levels S, P, F and D. The electron configurations, well, they made us arrange the periodic table, and this is the first block. The S block is what fills up first. When we have 1S1, that's hydrogen, and 1S2, that's helium. So the S block is the first two groups of the periodic table, including helium. The P block is groups 13 through to 18. These are the ones that fill the P subshell. Just remember that it's not helium because helium is an S, but the rest of that block is a P. The D block, well, that is the transition metals, the big group in the middle of the periodic table. That fills up the D orbitals. Remember that the D orbitals have 10 electrons in their shell, so they can fill up to 10. The F subshell, well, that's the lanthanides and A. Denies, and they have 14 electrons that can be filled in the F block. So they can have 14 different electrons placed into that subshell. We need to know how to differentiate between groups and periods. Remember the groups are the, the vertical columns of the periodic table and the periods are the horizontal rows. So groups go down the periodic table and they're numbered 1 through to 18. And the periods are labelled 1 through to 7 and they run across the periodic table. The periodic table, it's arranged in increasing atomic number, but it's also arranged in electron configuration as well. So it's arranged based on the number of protons, but because the patterns in electron arrangement repeat, it's also arranged on the electron configuration. The lanthanides and the actinides, if you can imagine just pushing the periodic table apart, they will fit into those two locations labelled. The period of an element is the outer energy level that is occupied by electrons. So it tells you how many shells this element will have. So if we take tit titanium, for example, it would be described as being in group four and period number four. So its outermost electrons will be in the fourth shell, so it has four energy levels. If we take something like fluorine, fluorine would be in group 17, period two. So it has two electron shells that are occupied with electrons, and it has seven outer shell electrons because it is in group 17. Okay, the number of principal energy levels and the number of valence electrons, well, that can be deduced from the position of an atom on the periodic table. So remember the electron filling diagram with the S, P, D and F electrons. And if we're asked to do this, we would need to look at the electron configuration of one of the atoms. Okay, so for instance, magnesium. The electron configuration of magnesium would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. So 3s2 means it has electrons in the third shell. Its principal energy level will be in the third shell and it has two valence electrons. So it has two electrons in the third shell, so they occupy the shell with the most energy. And that means that magnesium with two valence electrons could form an Mg2 plus ion. Bromium, which is in group 17, would have the electron configuration, and I'm going to do condense for this, square brackets of argon, and then the rest would be 3s, 3d10, 4s2, and then 3p5. Remember that the 3d, because it is actually in the third shell, it gets placed before the 4s2 electrons. So 4p5. So that means that this element has seven electrons in its outermost shell, in the fourth shell, and the biggest energy level it holds is a 4p electron. So it has seven valence electrons, eight is a nice stable octet, so bromine would like to gain one electron to form a negatively charged ion. Okay, the periodic table will also show the positions of the metals and the non-metals and the metalloids. 
So we've got this staircase that we're drawing for the periodic table. It runs from boron and zigzags its way down to the bottom of the periodic table. To the left of the staircase, we have the metals, everything that has metallic behavior. On the right of the staircase, we have the non-metals, so things that don't behave like metals. The metalloids, well, they have characteristics of both metals and non-metals. Their physical appearance is more like metals, but chemically they behave more like non-metals. And these are the elements that sit right on the staircase, and they've been labelled there. You've just got to be a little bit careful. Boron and aluminium, they're not considered metalloids because boron acts mainly as a non-metal, and aluminium acts solely as a metal. The two right down the bottom, well, they were made in a lab and they don't really exist, so you're never going to find them on Earth and they probably don't have any application. We need to know the location of the following families on the periodic table. So the alkali metals, the alkali metals are group one of the periodic table labelled here. Just be careful, hydrogen is not an alkali metal. I know that I've labelled it there, but it's not an alkali metal because it's a non-metal. Halogens, the halogens are group 17 of the periodic table. The noble gases, the noble gases are group 18 of the periodic table. Noble because they have a full outer shell. The transition metals, well that's the big block of elements from group 3 to group 12. Those are the transition metal elements and they have a differing oxidation state, which we touch on in, in the redox topic, topic 9. The lanthanides, well, that's the first row of the F block elements, and the actinoids is the second row of the F block elements. Group 2 of the periodic table, although we may not need to know what it is, it's also another one that might come up it's called the alkali earth metals. So group one is the alkali metals, group two is the alkali earth metals. Now we can use the periodic table and the location of certain elements to talk about their trend in either metallic or non-metallic behavior based solely upon its position. So remembering the staircase which separates the metals from the non-metals, we can kind of get a bit of an idea of what's going on here. Fluorine is the most non-metallic element up there in the top right hand corner. Francium is described as the most metallic element. So we have this spectrum or continuum of more metallic to less metallic based upon where they sit on the periodic table. Essentially the further to the left and the further you go down the periodic table the more metallic you're said to be and as you move to the right and go up the less metallic you're said to be. In terms of metallic, we're talking about the properties of metals, but we know that in the middle with the transition metals, many of them have great properties that we use every day. Okay, some top tips. Volume one, what is the periodic table or how is the periodic table arranged? Make sure you understand what the groups and periods tell you and use the periodic table when you need help writing an electron configuration. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.